Elijah on now, facing the basket. Look at that move. Was that pretty? That was beautiful. Guys, if you're looking for a max 2K account, high overall max badges, go check out sportstmb.com. The link to his website will be in the description. Super easy to navigate to. He'll hook you up right away with a great 2K account. I hope you guys do enjoy this video. But let's go ahead and get right into it. Yo, what's going on, guys, man? It's your boy, Dignified TW, and we're back with another video. Now, guys, today we're looking at Hakeem's post moves. I know I did this video in December, I think, but obviously my post game has changed a lot. So we're going to go look at it again. Look at some of his animations and see if we can replicate a lot of Hakeem's moves, which are actually really, really good. You can see his post fade. He's going to be using his fade three. He's got hook three, post hop shot three, and now his shimmy fade and the shimmy hook is what we're going to be looking at the most. So the dream shake itself is going to be shimmy fade two. You can see that gets that little animation right there with up and under specialist on the Hall of Fame. This is going to be extremely glitchy if we can get this a few times. Now his jump shot. This is what you're gonna to wanna to use. I use set shot 18 and release 47 for both of the releases. You can see it looks pretty slow, but hopefully we can get this done. If you guys wanna see another post score in the future before 2K20, make sure you leave it down below in the comment section, but we're gonna go ahead and get right into the games. All right guys, so we're finally back at the park and like I mentioned before, I've done Hakeem's moves. So now I've got a little bit more practice with them. We're on a 99 overall pure post score. And now in my opinion, a lot of people will say Hakeem maybe be a two way, but once you get this build at 99 overall, you have a silver defensive stopper and a lot of good defensive badges. So I think a 99 pure post is a pretty great way to represent Hakeem Olajuwon which in my opinion is the best center of all time you can see we're giving this guy the combos very early on fading away green great little combination there now you guys know when i do series like these i like to play how the actual nba player does try to do some of their post moves i don't like to speed boost i don't like to just drop step and shoulder charge and you know euro step all that kind of stuff that a lot of post scorers do because it's just not realistic i think these are more entertaining to watch actual post moves because these people when you get somebody with a post move and you actually get them like I got that guy right there it's a whole lot more satisfying it's a lot more fun to watch it's a lot more fun to do so that's what we usually like to stick with in these series now let's talk a little bit about Hakeem like I said I think the best post score the best center of all time and when I talk about that guys I know a lot of you guys might say Shaq was the best or Wilt was the best but when I'm talking about the best I like to think about longevity, different moves, different arsenals, different ways to score, how they play on defense, and like I said, the longevity. So Hakeem, during his career, he's a 24, 25 point scorer for a long, you know, long period of time in his career. He played amazing defense. He could shoot the ball. He could dri off dribble. He could, you know, do crossovers. He, his post game obviously was amazing. His dream shake is one of the most patented, if not the most patented moves in the NBA. And it's just, he's just a really good scorer. He could play amazing defense, like I said. And even he was giving people trouble like Shaq. You know, he was going to work on Patrick Ewing, David Robinson. He just, his different moves he has in the post. It was just unbelievable. One, It was so hard to predict, so hard to guard. And that's what, in my opinion, made Hakeem one of the best. Now, like I said, Hakeem had so many different moves. So whenever you were in the post, you didn't know how to guard him. If he was going up for an up fake, he actually might shoot the ball. But he had the dream shake that was pretty much unguardable like that move right there look how many different moves i put on him but like i said he had so many different moves it's just so hard to predict and he could switch it up based on what defense you were playing and since he has so many different moves he had a different move for every single move that you had so if you thought he's going to go for the like the dream shake and you're going to play straight up he's going to fade over you if you go for the dream shake you jump he's up and undering every single time and he's going to score like i said you can see again this play right here hitting him with the fade away fade three that hakeem uses and like I said, he was just unstoppable. Now, what I want to talk a little bit more about in this series is the post score. And like I said in the beginning, NBA players, obviously, they don't speed boost. They don't Euro step every single play. You guys like Hakeem, he was just dominant in the paint. 
And that's what I kind of want to see going into 2K20. I want to see more of the 2K18 post scoring back. Maybe a little bit more of the 2K17. Because this year, the post got really dried up around Christmas time. Like after this video I did in December, it's kind of dried up. A lot of the people played the exact same way. They just did the same Euro steps and speed boosting. And it's just boring to watch. And a good reason, I think I tweeted about this yesterday, where I figured out, you know, a good reason why a lot of people did this is because a lot of the post moves were broken. Now, right there, I can understand that maybe it's lightly, but a lot of these moves this year that were good on 2K17 and 2K18 and on 2K19, they were really bad. Like I said, the post hooks were unusable last year, and they're pretty unusable this year. I know a lot of people were excited when they came back with the shot meter for layups and uh, post hooks and all that kind of stuff like that. But if you've ever used a post hook before, and you even off the offhand, and you use the post hook, it's just not that good. The up and unders aren't the best. You don't really get a lot of good animations off those. Unless you're like right under the paint, you're not going to get a good layup animation off of up and under. Even if they jump, and pretty much other than that, you're going to get like a weird lightly contested jump shot, even if they jump off an up and under. So it's just like a lot of the moves aren't that good. You can see we're getting on with the dream shake fade right there. Like I said, we're doing a lot of different Hakeem moves. But you know what I'm saying? Like, let me know in the comment section what do you guys think post score needs to be involved with. Of course, take over super overpower this year. But like I'm showing you guys right here, I'm not doing speed boosting. I'm not doing any weird Euro steps or anything like that. I'm giving actual post moves, and we're able to, you know, 22 0 people, 21 0 people, beat people with ease, and we're not doing any of these glitchy post moves. So you see, they're just double teaming me every single time. I'm gonna kick it out of Aqua a couple times. He's gonna light it up, and we're gonna win that game. Now, we got somebody guarding me right here, another center. And I'm going to show you guys this gameplay. They, they even gave up guarding me because all the moves I were doing, I was just getting them every single time with up fakes and, you know, my jump shot green with Akeem's jumper. I was just getting them so many different ways in the post. They literally stopped guarding me midway through this game. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to be saying, you know, they're not that good to begin with. But we're just playing whoever we can. You can see a nice little up and under dream shake right there. Miss that one get blocked again this is a weird little broken play so i'm gonna go back into the post do one shoulder charge he pulls the chair probably by accident and then you move with the off shoulder fade and that's or the off shoulder uh, hook shot that's the only time you can really get that if you do it with the off shoulder and they're just playing nowhere near you you might be able to get a hook shot off but it's really not even that good of an animation this year you can see we're going with a fade away right there knocking it down and we're gonna go up six to zero so again, I'm pretty much just taking all the double teams. I'm telling Aqui to go to the corner. I'm hitting him with so many different post moves. Like I said, they don't know how to guard me. You can see I'm doing the up and under right here. That's heavily contested. Like, I don't understand. I understand he's there. Maybe it's a light contest and it should go in a lot. But there's no reason that is a heavily contested shot. When I'm going off his off shoulder, he's just standing in the paint. Like, I just don't think that's a great animation. You can see right here, we're doing another little dream fake fade into the three or to the mid-range shot and we're knocking it down you can see this time we're gonna go with a drop step now i know drop step he was he was dominating the paint we had to get him a couple times because these guys were double teaming I, i'm telling you the amount of fouls these guys have i don't know if i pulled it up but one guy fouled out and this is what i was talking about right here they stopped playing defense just because they couldn't guard me so you can see i'm like i'm confused at this point my guy's standing out of bounds i'm like what is going on this guy wants to come and guard me I was literally just scoring at will every single time. You can see again, going with a little dream fake, he jumps up and under. And like I said, if you're not deep inside of the paint like that, you're not going to get that animation. But that animation right there was really good. You can see again, throwing him the whole entire arsenal, hitting him with a fadeaway that time. He jumps, can't get there. We're knocking it down. So at this point, I'm pretty sure we've used literally every single hooky move. You guys can see, you can score in the post without being a cheesy pole scorer with drop stepping and shoulder charging and speed boosting it's more fun to watch you'll have more fun doing it and of course you can use the exploits if you have to but scoring like this is a whole lot more fun you're going to get a more better reaction out of it people are going to enjoy it more and i think you're going to enjoy yourself more as well so you can see they're leaving me open right there i didn't want to shoot that mid-range but nice little move right there to the spin i don't know that was an open shot should have made it probably but we're going to do a little up and under. He jumps again. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, he jumps. I should be able to hold my left analog stick towards the goal and get it up and under. You know what I'm saying? Like, he jumps. Nobody in the post is going to do that. They're going to get a nice little up and under animation almost every single time. You can see again, isolating this guy. Take him off dribble like Hakeem usually would. Go back into the post. Bumps one time. Post hop shot three. 
and we're going to be knocking it down. So this is going to be the last play of the game, guys. Like I said, let me know who the best center in the NBA ever is. Let me know what you guys want to see improvements in the post next year, but you can see we're ending it with a nice hook. But guys, I've been Dignified. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and I'm out.